Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. Welcome back to Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the mountains of northwestern Arkansas, just south of the Lake of the Ozarks. The climate here has been described as subtropical, but there are four distinct seasons, with hot, humid summers and snowy winters. Deep ravines and scenic mountain vistas and views are around every turn in the trail, as this area is truly one of America's jewels. In the forest crowded with oak, maple, hickory, and hawthorn trees, a two-story forest canopy shelters a lower canopy of pawpaw, sumac, and aromatic dogwood bushes. Amongst this cover you will see turkeys, squirrels, white-tailed deer, and sometimes a black bear or two. The predators of the area are mostly smaller in size, featuring coyotes, gray and red fox, as well as bobcats. It is in this beautiful and wild setting that our episode takes place today. On October 22, 2019, at around 6.30 p.m., Thomas Alexander was up in his tree stand in Marion County hoping a trophy buck would walk within muzzleloader range so he could fill his freezer for the winter. He was just outside of a small town called Yellville and had grown up in this area. He was an avid outdoorsman and loved hunting and fishing. Thomas had seen some deer and was waiting for a good shot on a deer he was hoping to bag, but conditions would have to work out for him to be successful. A muzzleloader is a firearm that loads from the end of the barrel like an old school gun from the nation's early history. To reload the long gun after firing, the user must clear the barrel with the ramrod, then pour powder into the chamber before packing a wadding and bullet down the barrel, and then replace the firing cap. This is much more time consuming than a rifle that fires manufactured shells. Thomas basically had one shot on his deer before it would likely disappear into the thick foliage, so it should be a good one. As he surveyed the area around him, he could see a nice buck approaching his position in the tree stand. The key to stand hunting is similar to spotting and stalking an animal from the ground. Movements, sounds, and smells should be minimized, and Thomas patiently waited for a broadside angle to increase the odds of hitting a vital area, such as the lungs or the heart of the buck. As the buck entered a promising shooting lane, Thomas raised his muzzleloader and steadied himself for a shot. Just as soon as he thought he had a good view, on the deer's shoulder he gently squeezed the trigger on the muzzleloader, releasing a belch of smoke and a resounding blast pushing the bullet towards the buck's ribs. As soon as the smoke had cleared, Thomas watched as the buck scampered a few yards, then fell over suddenly. His shot had struck pay dirt, and the buck was on the ground, dead. Thomas carefully climbed down from his tree stand and leaned his muzzleloader against a nearby tree. The buck lay just a few yards from him, now, and wasn't moving. It appeared as dead as early Sunday traffic, and Thomas reached around his belt line, searching for his hunting knife. He began to bend down towards the buck's neck to cut its throat and let it bleed out before beginning to gut it. Just as Thomas reached down, the buck's eyes popped open and its head turned in his direction. The buck wasn't as dead as it appeared and immediately bowled into Thomas, plunging its antlers into his chest and driving him backwards. It gored him, puncturing his flesh very quickly several times, then turned and blurred into the undergrowth in a fast retreat. The surprise defensive attack happened so quickly and with such force that Thomas was completely puzzled and confused. He knew that the buck's antlers had stabbed into his chest deeply and he would need help very soon. He pulled out his cell phone and called his wife. After explaining the details of the confrontation to her, she called the authorities to help her husband. She also called his cousin and nephew to go get him to safety. As they arrived at Thomas's location, they searched for him for a short time before finding him laying on the ground. He was bleeding from the wounds in his chest and was having a hard time with the shock of the incident. The EMTs landed as close as they could in the air ambulance. Just before they could load him on board, Thomas stopped breathing. They immediately began CPR and then rushed him to the Baxter Regional Medical Center in nearby Mountain Home and wheeled him hastily inside. The medical professionals there worked feverishly on reviving Thomas, but the wounds from the deer's antlers and the stress of the situation had taken its toll. His life at last slipped away soon after his arrival. Wildlife officers immediately began to search for the wounded buck using dogs to track it. The day's efforts were fruitless, though, as a gentle rain began falling soon after their arrival, washing away hopes of trailing the deer's scent or blood. They eventually stopped the pursuit after not finding the buck. Arkansas Game and Fish Officer Keith Stevens described the incident that claimed Thomas' life as one of the strangest things that's ever happened in his 20-year career. He expressed wonder about just how long the buck was left to lay on the ground before the hunter approached it, 
He finished by stating that they had not found the deer after losing the scent trail. The postmortem examination didn't reveal an exact cause of death, but did state Thomas had several puncture wounds. They attributed his death to a pre-existing medical condition despite the trauma inflicted on his body by the deer antlers. They considered the wounds from the deer's antlers as a contributing factor in his death. After reviewing the facts surrounding this fascinating and sad episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think the wounds inflicted by the deer antlers caused Thomas's death, or did he die from the trauma and stress of the encounter? Do you think if Thomas had waited longer that the outcome may have been different? Did he make a mistake by not reloading his muzzleloader and carrying it with him in his approach to the deer? I look forward to reading your comments, so please post them below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and clicking on the bell icon to keep you notified of our latest video releases. Sharing our video links on your social media might help save a life and spread the fun. As a member of our human network, be careful out there because you don't want to end up on an episode of Scary Animal Attacks.